Okay, let's have a look at the standard pentatonic scale. Um, we're going to explore what is left and right of the, the pentatonic scale. What it basically entails is there are more than one pentatonic shape. This is one of the f of five shapes. So we often refer to this particular shape, which is the, the one most people know and most people learn uh, when they they want to learn to play um, solos on the, on the guitar, uh, that would be the first scale shape that they will learn. Uh, this we I either refer to as the G shape or the first position. Now don't be confused by that for now. We'll just refer ref, refer to it for now as first position. Think of it as the first scale that you've learned. All right, so now we're going to look at extending the scale. And what actually happens here is we're actually going to use some of the other um, shapes that su supposedly are, well, the other shapes that are next to this or adjacent to this particular scale. All right, very simple. I'm going to keep it very easy for you to understand. But before we do that, just ha let's have a look at the root notes of the scale, this particular root note here is what we call the minor root note. Now, most people would use the scale in blues or in some form of blues rock. And then if they play in the key of A, they would use this um, particular root note, for instance, A. That will be key of G, key of F, etc., etc. So the idea is for you to be able to move the scale up or down the neck and sort of navigate your way using um, this low, thick uh, E string. So that we refer to as the minor root note. Now the other uh, root note that we're going to have a look at, let's make that another color would be the major root note. The moment you're going to use the major root note, um, this scale becomes what we call the country pentatonic. So let's say we want to play in the key of D. We would move the whole shape until that note's on the D. Or we would move the whole shape, and now we play in the key of G major, etc., etc. So that will help you find your way playing in a major key. Okay, so now let's just have a look at these extensions. I'm going to use another color for that. Let's use green. So that particular extension, very easy. I just skip one space here, another space there on the low two strings, the E and the A string. I could do exactly the same on the high strings. You don't need any of the others right now our next step would be to fill in um, the passing notes now the moment you add passing notes to the pentatonic scale it actually changes its name to the blues scale because those passing notes actually create a spicy interesting sound so generally most people would use specific passing notes and I'm going to quickly show you the standard passing notes. And they are usually the D sharp there. And so on. All right. Now, usually when you actually listen to the blues and watch well-known players, um, you'll often find that they use actually more passing notes than the standard passing notes. So I'm going to fill in those passing notes that they often would use. So that's going to include the C sharp and the G sharp, but it's very simple. All you need to do is just look at a box like this, and everything in between can be passing notes. Look, here we've got another box. So no passing notes there because that's not a perfect box. Same there. Now you might say, okay, what's going on there? Now look at this. There's actually another note there that I can add in that's part of the pentatonic scale. Look, we've got the E there, the E there, and another E there. All right, so now we've completed all the passing notes. Just to show you 
an interesting way to actually to, uh, use the, the pentatonic or blues scale. Now, generally, most people would actually cut some of these notes. I'm just going to show you which ones they generally would leave out, but it doesn't mean that we're not uh, going to use them anymore. Sorry, I actually erased a note that was supposed to be still there. And they would usually leave this one out as well, but I'm going to leave it in because it's going to give you the reference for the major scale. So now we've got a, an interesting scale shape, a new scale shape, and usually you would navigate using your index finger, ring finger, index ring, and then would slide. Index ring, index ring, slide. Index ring, index ring. And then obviously for most of these passing notes, you would use your middle finger. But let's say, for instance, I want to play four notes on the string, be index finger, middle, ring, and pinky. Same there. And the same here. All right, it's, it would be a good idea for you to memorize the scale shape. Let's have a look at uh, that pentatonic scale. Uh, the G shape, or also called the first position. So here it goes. If you don't know the shape yet, it's quite easy to learn. Alright, then we said that this is the minor root note. So let's say I'm playing in the key of A uh, blues, or A blues. Or in the key of A minor. use but let's say we're in the key of a major then i will use my pinky on the a so now we're in the key of a major a d e same shape and we call that the country um, pentatonic scale so now we've added two notes on this side here at, uh, two low strings and on the high strings so now we have so we basically have that okay and then we included the passing notes now the standard passing notes are usually that D sharp over there and there. And there you go, blue scale. But in practical applications, most blues players actually use more than those passing notes. So whenever you have a box like here, that's my extension box there, I can add passing note slide, passing note slide. All right, so included the passing notes, and now we have um, a full extension or extended blue scale pattern. Let's move on. A few moves that you have to go and memorize in order to create your own ideas and licks. And that's the idea of the lick generator, is to create lines that will always sound interesting and fresh. In order to do that, I'm just going to select another color just to show you how we're going to do this. So for our first move, we're going to do this. So we're going to look at this box here on the low two E and A strings. And what we're going to do is we're going to start playing this note, the C there. So it sounds like that. And then we're going to play the C sharp. 
But we can actually do a hammer on from C to C sharp. Listen to this. And then we're going to play with our uh, ring finger, the A there. So here we go again C, C sharp, A. The idea is to keep this finger down, don't lift this finger up. Alright, so let's do it again C, C sharp, A. Okay, that was not a very good hammer on. Okay, then we're going to repeat this whole concept on the next box there that contains the same notes. So, there we go. And lastly, we'll do the same thing again, right up there into that new extension on the high strings. Alright, so once you've got that going, instead of hammering on like we did now, you can also bend the C to sound like the C sharp, and then play the A. So I'm going to play the C, and bend it slightly up so it sounds like the C sharp. Let's just first listen to the C sharp. So we're going to bend the C to sound like the C sharp. So here we go, and then play the A. So I play C, bend it up to sound like C sharp, and then A. Let's repeat that in the next box. Almost sounds like a slide guitar. Alright, and we're going to repeat the same process here. But this time, you probably want to bend the string up. In this case, you could either bend the string up or down, doesn't matter as long as you reach the pitch. So let me just play all three. And we can also do the hammer-on um, concept. All right, I want you to practice that every day until it becomes part of um, muscle memory. Let's move on. Have a look at move one of the lick generator so we have the pentatonic scale as we know it we added those extensions passing notes and now move one so we are on the third fret a string hammer on and note that i don't lift up this finger so hammer on play the A. We're going to repeat that in the next octave. Follow the diagram. Next octave. So, the idea is to get this into muscle memory. Next uh, step of move one is to bend that note to sound like the C sharp. So first of all, let's just listen to the C sharp. So we're going to bend C, so you can just pull the string down. Here you have to push the string up. Now you can actually start to mix ideas. So by just playing the notes of that extended scale shape with the pentatonic um, extensions and the um, passing notes you can actually create your own lines listen to this immediately it starts to sound interesting and that's just one move lick generator move number two again i'll use yellow to indicate what must happen so again, uh, we're going to start on the A string. The previous time we also started on the A string with move one on the C, then we did a hammer on to C sharp, played the A, and we repeated that process through three octaves. Same thing. Okay, and then we bent up the note, and we did more or less the same thing. But this time, we're also going to start on the A string, but not on that C, we're going to start with our fourth finger, our pinky, on the D sharp. Then we're going to do a 
pull off to the D and a pull off to the C. That is called a double pull off. But the idea is to keep this finger on the C anchored. So here we go. Double pull off. So I'm going to start with a D sharp. Pull off to the D. Pull off to the C. So I only pick once. I only pick the D sharp. All right. And then I'm going to do something interesting. I'm just going to use another color for that just so um, it is it's easier for us to um, let me see if I can find another yeah, color. Let's just use a gray. Okay. We'll use the gray to do that. And from, so we're going to go pull off, another pull off, in other words, a double pull off, one, one pick on the D sharp, and then we're going to hammer on to the C sharp. So pull off, pull off, hammer on to the C sharp, and right after that, we're going to go back and play that um, A again. And we're going to repeat that process throughout all three octaves. But let me first play it to you. So D sharp, pull off to D, pull off to C, hammer on to C sharp, A. I only pick twice, the D sharp and the A. So here it goes again. Now if I'm going to repeat that in the next octave, it's going to sound like this. So... Let me just quickly get that grey colour for the, there we go, for the hammer-ons. Oops, now I changed that into another colour, but that's fine. That actually makes more sense. So basically, I'm going to play D sharp, pull off to D, pull off to C, hammer-on to C sharp, play A throughout all octaves. <laughs> Now, if we start to combine what we just had with move one and move two, you'll find it's quite interesting. Also practice this till you have it under um, your fingers in muscle memory. Move two of the lick generator. So basically our first move was Right, and I'm sure you're familiar with the scale shape by now. And the second move starts on the A string as well, but instead of the C, we start on the D sharp here with our pinky. And look, I've got my index finger, ring finger, and pinky down on the string. So actually pressing those down. So I'm going to play the C sharp, then pull it off to the D, then pull it off to the C, hammer on the C sharp, and then the A there. Watch, I only pick once here, and then second time there. All right, now we can start to sort of like mix and match what we've learned up until now. So we've got move one, which we also can bend. We've got move two. All right, now let's just mix that with some of the notes that are in the scale. So. doing is so I'm just sort of navigating the pentatonic without the passing notes and then I include the passing notes using those moves. Good. Our next step is going to be to um, add more passing notes. Um, in a very interesting and unconventional way that will change the way you play totally and make your licks sound much more interesting 
than the standard ones that most people know um, and use. So first of all, I'm just going to use a, a lighter shade of this color just to add more passing notes. Oops, sorry about that. There we go. again okay let's use the same colors no problem all right so just left of all these notes we've added more passing notes and then just right of these we can also add more passing notes now instead of going there i'm just going to leave those two because of the the finger uh, or the fingering for this one uh, or two strings so let's just remove those we can use them but we just going to make it a little bit easier so instead of placing those passing notes i'm going to also add the, the b and the f sharp there and again the b here now that looks very strange first of all i'm just going to remove these three passing notes in between here just so it's much easier for you to visualize this new scale shape. So I'm just going to play the new scale shape. So the G sharp, the A, then the B, the C, C sharp, D, and so forth. It's not going to sound like much, but I'll show you how to use it just now. So here it goes. G sharp, A, B, C. You could slide to the C. C sharp, D, E. So I'm using on the C sharp index finger, D, uh, middle finger, E, pinky slide with the pinky on to F. Creating an interesting sound. So you can ascend doing this and descend doing that. Now I'm going to include those three passing notes again just so that you know that we're going to actually use them um, in our playing still. So I'm going to try and see if I can make up licks by using a slide. Let's say a slide from the G sharp into the A then playing the G there with the pinky and pulling off to the F sharp and playing the E for instance. So let's start here on the G sharp. So I'm going to play that note and slide into the A. So here we go, G sharp, slide into the A. Then we're going to play the G there, pull off to the F sharp. Sorry, G, F sharp, pull off to the E. So let's just try and play that more in a continuous way. And we can repeat that same kind of concept on the next string pair. And so on. Now I'm going to combine those ideas with some of the other ideas we've learned in move one and move two. So we'll call this then uh, up move three. We have the basic pentatonic scale. I'm going to exclude those extensions for now, like that. And now we've added notes on that side. So here are the pentatonic notes. So now we have... Sorry. And we've added these notes. that one as well I'm going to include some of those moves like for instance move one and suddenly I have much more melodic content and it sounds very interesting because it's not just the notes that most people always land on and we tend to play blues like this nothing wrong with that but to make it more spicy we 
can also bend these notes. So instead of playing slide like that, we can go. I'm using move one there, move two. The idea is to try and also develop some legato, in other words, using things like slide, hammer on, slide, or bend, trying to get sort of like a continuous kind of flow of notes. The idea is to always try and land at least on one of those blue notes within our diagram, which is, or are rather, the diatonic notes. In other words, the notes that are in the key. So we can create... We can land on a passing note, but not too long, otherwise it's going to sound a little weird. Okay, let's move on doing what we've just learned using move one of our lick generator, move two and move three combined with some of the just the notes of the scale, just navigating through the scale using hammer ons uh, and slides, pull offs, etc. etc. So, I'm going to try and show you with this video how I create a continuous flow of notes. This is not the way one should improvise. Uh, obviously, when you improvise, you're going to try and keep it musical. You're going to try and, and have certain phrases, like you would have a sentence in, in any language, which would be like a phrase. So, here we go. I'm going to play a backtrack and just show you. We are in the key of A minor. So, my index finger is going to be here on the fifth fret. And I'm going to use the basic pentatonic shape with its extensions and the conventional passing notes and those extra passing notes and then the very extra passing notes that we've just added with move three. So here we go. Here we go. 